All right, we're looking at operations with complex numbers. <clears throat> These are complex numbers. They're called complex because in this number right here, you have right here a real part. And right here, this is an imaginary part. A complex number has a real and an imaginary part. This one here, my real part, is negative 5. My imaginary part is the plus 2i. So it's real and imaginary. All right, well, the operations we're going to look at, first one is addition. When you add complex numbers, this is very simple. All you do is you look at your like terms. Look at your real part. See my real part here is 5. My real part there is 7. So I do 5 plus 7, which is 12. My imaginary part, this positive 2i, a, a negative 4i, 2 plus negative 4 would be negative 2i. And so there's my answer there when I add those together. Here's another addition. Okay. My real part's right here, negative 3 and a positive 5. So negative 3 plus a positive 5 would be a positive 2. And then my imaginary part, i got a positive 6, and I've got a positive 4. So 6 plus 4 would be a positive 10i. And so that's what I get when I add those. So that's addition. Addition is very simple. we got subtraction. That's very simple too. The only thing though on subtraction, when I subtract this one from the first one, I'm going to get into some problems with subtraction by uh, having terms that are opposite signs or whatever. So the best thing to do when you have subtract is go ahead and distribute this negative into this expression here, into this, this complex number. So this 5 becomes a negative 5. The minus 2i becomes a positive 2i. And now when I change that, I can add them. We really don't want to do subtraction. We want to add. And so now I just add like the addition. So 4 plus negative 5 would be negative 1. And then negative 3 plus positive 2 would be a, another negative 1i. And I don't have to write the 1, so there you go. There's my answer for that. Okay. Here's another one. I'm subtracting this expression from the first one. This complex number from that complex number. So I just distribute that minus into this expression here. That turns this into a plus, and it turns this plus into a minus. And now I can just add it. Okay, so negative 5 plus positive 2 would be negative 3. And then on the imaginary parts, I got a positive 4 and a negative 3. So positive 4 plus negative 3 would be a positive 1i. And that would be my answer there. So on subtraction, you just distribute your minus into that expression after the minus, and then you just add your like terms. So you just do addition. We really don't want to do subtraction because we come into problems there. A lot of times what happens when you have this minus, you mess up on this second term here. So we just distribute the minus and add. All right, then we have multiplication. All right, on multiplication, like in this one here, we just distribute this 3i. We just distribute it into this expression here and multiply. All right, so when I do that, 3i times negative 2. Well, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so it'd be negative 6i. Okay, when I do 3i to this next one, 3i times a positive 4i. Well, that's a positive 12, and I've got 2i, so it's an i squared. Okay, well, the thing you have to remember now, if you do this, multiplication, i squared is a negative 1. So we can simplify this. This is actually a positive 12 times a negative 1, which is actually a negative 12. So I've got negative 6i minus 12. And then typically we put the uh, real part first. So really the negative 12 usually is first and then minus 6i. And there you go. There's my answer for that multiplication. Here's another one here. I, did, I just distribute this. So when I do negative 4i times 3, well, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, so that's negative 12i. When I do negative 4i times negative 5i, well, negative 4 times negative 5 is a positive 20. 
but I've got two i's, which is i squared. All right, well, i squared, if you remember, that's a negative 1. So I've got a positive 20 times negative 1, which is a negative 20. So I've got this negative 12i minus 20. And then typically, like I said, we usually put the real part first. So negative 20 and then minus 12i would be my answer there. Okay. Now when you have a complex number times a complex number like right here, okay, this can get a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, we do what's called the FOIL method, which means I've got to do my first ones, first ones, my outer ones, my inner ones, and my last ones. All right, well, I like doing this box multiplication, doing the FOIL method in this box. So I'm going to make a column for the 5. I'm going to make a column for the negative 4i. And then this first one, I'm going to put it to the side. So I've got a row for the 3, and I've got a row for the plus 2i. And so I have four products here, which is what FOIL is. You've got four products. But this arranges it in such a way that it's a little bit easier to see what goes together and you make less mistakes. So like right here, in this square, that's going to be 5 times 3, which is 15. In this square of the box, I've got negative 4i times 3, which is negative 12i. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, and the i comes down. Right here, this is 5 times 2i. Well, 5 times 2 is 10, and this i comes over. And then this last square, I usually do it outside the box because it always ends up with the i squared, which is a negative 1. So in this one, I've got negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. And then I've got two i's, which is i squared. See, it always comes up to be i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1. And then negative 8 times negative 1 is a positive 8. So that's what goes in the square there, a positive 8. And then when you do this box, these always typically go together. They're, they always end up to be real numbers. So 15 plus 8 would be 23. And then these right here end up being imaginary numbers every time. So I've got negative 12 plus 10 which is negative 2, I. And there you go, there's my answer right there. Okay. The box is very helpful because these always end up as real parts and these always end up as imaginary parts. So you really make less mistakes. So if you happen to get this one right here with the I in it, you realize, well, hey, that's supposed to be real. And so you'll see your mistake there. Whereas if you just do FOIL method, you may not see that. Here's another one we're going to do the box method on. Okay, so I'll just build my box underneath this first one, or the second one. I've got a column for the negative 2, and I've got a column for the positive 5i. And I'm going to take 6, I've got a row for it, and minus 4i, I've got a row for it. And there's my four products again. It really doesn't matter if you put this one on top or if you put that one on top. Either way, it should come up with the same product. So in this square right here, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. In this square, 5i times 6 is 30i. Down here, negative 2 times negative 4i, that's a positive 8i. And then this one, I usually do it outside the box. Like I said, this is 5i times negative 4i, which 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, and I've got an i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1. And so negative 20 times negative 1 is a positive 20. So that's a positive 20 in that square, which is real. And these two are the real ones. Negative 12 plus 20 would be 8. And then my imaginaries are this way. 30i plus 8i would be 38i. And there you go. There's my answer. So multiplication is not too bad. Now these are conjugates. Conjugates are when we have... See, my real part is both of them are 3, but the imaginary parts are opposites. So I've got 3 minus 4i, here 3 plus 4i. These are conjugates. See, here's another one right here, fives and then opposites. They're both fives for the real part, but they're opposites for the imaginary part. All right, now when I multiply these, I'm going to build me a box here. And we'll put the 3 in the front here and the negative 4i in the front. And so I got the product again, just like we were doing. 
So right here, this is three times three in that square, nine. In this square, I got three times four i, which is 12 i. In this one, I got three times negative four i, which is negative 12 i. And in this one, I've got four i times negative four i. Well, four times negative four is negative 16, and I've got an i squared. Well, i squared is negative one, so that would be a positive 16. Okay. Now, when I add my real parts right there, there's my real parts. 9 plus 16 is 25. But look what happens when I add my imaginary parts. I've got 12i and negative 12i. They cancel. So I end up with just a real number here of 25. There is no imaginary number. And that's what happens when you multiply conjugates every time. Your imaginaries will always cancel out and you end up with just a real number. So if you look at this one here, building my square, I'll go a little faster on this one. I've got 5 plus 2i. So this is 25. This is negative 10i. This is positive 10i. And this is going to be a negative 4i squared, which i squared is negative 1, so that's a positive 4. So 25 plus 4 is 29. And then my i's will cancel out again. So it's just 29. So what you can do, since these are going to cancel every time, you can get by with not doing a box and uh, just multiplying your fives together, which is 25, and then multiplying your twos together, two times two is four, and you'll always add them. So if you look at a one down here, okay? If I do negative one times negative one, that's gonna be a one, and then three times three would be nine, and I add them, that's gonna be a 10. Okay, I'll do the box if you, you know, just for your benefit here. I've got negative 1 plus 3i. I've got negative 1 minus 3i. All right, this is going to be a positive 1. That's going to be a negative 3i. That's going to be a positive 3i. They cancel. And this is going to be a negative 9i squared, which is negative 9 times negative 1, which is 9. And I add these together. It's 10, and those cancel. So here's one here, conjugates, so I just do 6 times 6, which is 36, 2 times 2, which is 4, and I add them. There you go. So doing conjugates can be really easy if you just remember this little concept about how the imaginaries cancel out. Let's write another one down, 5 plus 8i, how about that? 5 minus 8i, here you go, these are conjugates. Okay, so 5 times 5 is 25, 8 times 8 is 64, and I add them, 89. Okay, but you can't do this if they're not conjugates. They must be conjugates to do this. Otherwise, you got to do the box. All right, last thing we're going to look at is division. And the division is a little bit more complicated. Because, uh, like, look here. we got negative 5 divided by 4i. The division process on this uh, is a little bit tricky. Now, this one we might could do normal way, but when we get to some that have complex numbers in the bottom, that's a little bit, a little bit harder. So what we usually do is we just go ahead and figure out what the conjugate is of this denominator. Now, if you think about it, this is 0 plus 4i. So my conjugate would be 0 minus 4i, which is just negative 4i. And what, is, what I do is I multiply the numerator and the denominator by negative 4i. Because the, the whole thing is, when I multiply conjugates in the denominator, the i's will go away. They'll cancel. So when I multiply this, negative 5 times negative 4i would be a positive 20i. Down here... 4i, and I'm going to mark this out here, because 4i times negative 4i, would well, that be negative 16i squared, which i squared is a negative 1, which is a positive 16. So I get 20i over 16, and then 20 over 16 will simplify. 4 will go into 25 times, 4 will go into 16 4 times. So this is 5i over 4, and that would be my answer there. Okay, I kind of run into this problem here. Let's put this little barrier there. See, my denominator is 5i. I'm dividing by 3 minus 4i divided by 5i. Well, the conjugate of that 
would be negative 5i. Okay, I multiply top and bottom. Well, when I do the bottom here, negative 5, 5 times negative 5 is negative 25, and that's going to be i squared, which is negative 1. So that gives me a 25 in the denominator. Okay. Then the numerator, i got to distribute this. Okay, to both of those. So negative 5i times 3 would be negative 15i. Negative 5i times Negative 4 would be a positive 20 i squared, but now i squared is a negative 1, so that's a negative 20. Okay, well, like I said earlier, we usually want the real part first. So negative 20 minus 15 i would go first over 25. Okay, and then here's another thing. Usually when we have a complex number in in a fraction like this, we usually split it up. So what I mean by that is I'm going to put negative 20 over 25, then I've got a minus here, then I've got 15 over 25i. We split it up that way. Here's my real part and there's my imaginary part. See, it's all mixed up there. So if I split it up like this, both of these divided by 25, there's my real part, there's my imaginary part, and then they simplify. So like right here, 5 goes into both of those. So 5 goes into 20 four times, 5 goes into 25 five times, 5 goes into 15 three times, 5 goes into 25 five times. And so that would be my answer right there. Okay. Uh, here's another one here. I've got 3i divided by this. All right, my conjugate of that is 4 plus 2i. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4 plus 2i. All right, so uh, on the top here, I'm just going to distribute. So 3i times 4 would be 12i. 3i times 2i would be 6i squared. Of course, i squared is negative 1, so that's going to be a negative 6. On the bottom, these are conjugates, so I can do that shortcut. 4 times 4 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4. I add them 20. Okay, 4 times 4 is 16, 2 times 2 is 4, and I add them. That's what you do for conjugates, because the imaginary part is going to cancel out. And so there you go, there's my answer, but I need to split it up, because what's my imaginary part? What's my real part? So I, and uh, let's go ahead and switch them, because see this negative 6 is my real part, so I've got negative 6 over 20. And then the imaginary part goes second, so it's going to be plus. See, it's positive. There's no sign there, so plus 12i over 20. And then see if they simplify. And this does because 2 goes in both those, so it'd be negative 3 over 10 plus. And then 4 goes in both of those. 12 divided by 4 would be 3. 20 divided by 4 would be 5. And so there's, there's my final answer right there. Uh, I've drawn all around this one here. Let's, let's, uh, let's move it down here. 7 divided by 1 minus i. All right, so my conjugate of this, 1 plus i, top and bottom. Okay. So that means on the top here, I distribute. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times i is 7i. Okay. On the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, I add them, 2. Okay, and then I split them up. So it's going to be 7 over 2 plus 7 over 2 with the i. And so there you go. All right. Now, the hardest thing to get to in division is uh, when they're both complex numbers like this. And it's not really hard, just it takes a little bit more time. So uh, again, when I do division, I always conjugate the denominator. So my denominator, 5 minus i, with the conjugate is 5 plus i. Top and bottom. You always do this same thing, top and bottom. The reason is because 5 plus i divided by 5 plus i is 1. And I've got 1 times this, which is going to be the same thing. It's just going to change the look of it. 
All right, so when I do the top, well, I'm gonna have to do a box for that. So I'm gonna build me a box down here, okay? I've got uh, 23 plus 11i on top, and I got five plus i on the side. 23 plus 11i on the top, five plus i on the side, and now I do my multiplication. 23 times 5 is 115. 11i times 5 is 55i. 23 times i down here is 23i. And then right here, I do it outside. 11i times i is 11i squared. And i squared is negative 1, so that's a negative 11. Okay. So I've got 115 plus negative 11. That's going to be 104. Then I got 55 plus 23, which is 78i. All right, there you go. There's my numerator. Okay. Now, in the denominator, these are conjugates. So I just do 5 times 5, which is 25. 1 times 1 is 1. I add those, 26. Okay. Multiplying conjugates is easy. All right, so there's my answer right there, but I got to split it up. We don't ever want our answer like this. It's got to be split up. So here's my real part, 104 over 26 plus 78 over 26i. Okay, and then look here. I think this right here simplifies. Uh, I think it simplifies to 4. You can just type that in your calculator. On calculators, when you have these fractions, they'll do they'll do them for you. Just like 104 divided by 26, and see it simplifies it to four. And then right here, let's simplify that one. 78 divided by 26. That's three, so it's going to be three i. And there you go. There's my answer. So that's simplified to all whole numbers. Okay. Well, here's one last one we're going to do. All right. So 5 plus 8i divided by negative 1 minus 3i. So I'm going to conjugate that. So when I do my conjugate, I've got negative 1, and I'm going to go plus 3i. Negative 1 plus 3i. Okay. See, my real parts are the same. My imaginary parts are opposites. All right. So... You know, this time I'm going to do the denominator because it's going to be real easy. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 3 is 9. That's going to add up to 10. Okay? Went ahead and get the easy part out of the way. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 3 is 9. And they add up to 10. Now the numerator, I've got to do a box for it. So i got 5 plus 8i and then negative 1 plus 3i. Oops, let me get it on the screen here. So I'm going to do the numerators here. Okay, so right here, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Negative 1 times 8i is negative 8i. 5 times 3i is 15i. And then in this square here, I've got 8 times 3 is 24, and I've got an i squared. Well, the i squared is negative 1. So that's a negative 24 right here. So I've got negative 5 plus negative 24, which is negative 29. And then I've got negative 8i plus 15i, which is 7i. And there's my answer, but we got to split it up. So I've got my real part, negative 29 over 10 plus, then I've got 7 over 10, I, and then I simplify it. Uh, if you use your calculator here, I don't think it simplifies. I'm going to show you here. Negative 29 divided by 10, okay, negative 2.9. So if you change it to a fraction, let's see here. Uh, there you go, negative 29 over 10. It does not simplify. And the same thing for 7 over 10. 7 divided by 10, it's 0.7. If I change it to a fraction, just 7 over 10. It does not simplify. There you go, that's my answer. Okay. So that's a uh, oh, wrong thing. That's operations with complex numbers. All right, so if you need some help with anything, just let me know. Have a great rest of the day.